We're going to talk about vitamin E now and its necessity for our brains. It's deficient, as I mentioned, 93% of Americans. They analyzed 116 journals in 2019. They confirmed that Alzheimer's patients were significantly lower in vi vitamin E levels in cerebrospinal fluid and in the brain, where it's really needed. Different ways that vitamin E can help. Vitamin E regenerates superoxide dismutase. So you need not just those three minerals, which I hope you can remember, copper, zinc, and manganese, but you also need vitamin E in order to have your superoxide dismutase continually regenerated. It reduces brain inflammation. It's a, this study looked at vitamins A, C, and E, and vitamin E was the most powerful and gave the most protection against Alzheimer's disease. Big study in China looked at nut consumption. 40% less memory loss over two years in people who ate nuts, and the Chinese mostly eat peanuts rather than other nuts. That's their preference. So nut consumption was associated with sustained memory. An ounce of nuts daily reduced neurodegenerative disease 35% across 29 studies. So that's a different study that found that it's very effective to make sure you have enough vitamin E. The best way, sunflower seeds and walnuts. That, I think, is the best way. Vitamin E in food, they looked at 800 elders, followed them for, eight, for four years, and vitamin E lowered the odds of Alzheimer's disease 67%. Excellent. Wouldn't you like to lower your odds of Alzheimer's 67%? So in our study, as I mentioned, one ounce of walnuts, one ounce of sunflower seeds, both ground up daily. Now, vitamin E supplements. Another study here looked at elders with moderate Alzheimer's disease and tried to keep them out of the hospital, managed care, or the morgue. And they gave them a ridiculous amount of vitamin E, 2,000 IUs. Now, the upper limit, the most you're supposed to take, is 1,000 IUs. Now, that's actually based upon real vitamin E. And what they gave them was synthetic. And the synthetic vitamin E has vitamin E activity under 1,000. So no one was actually hurt by the study. But they were kept out of the morgue, managed care, or the hospital. I don't recommend that level of vitamin E. Now, on this graph, I'll show you that vitamin E, as found in normal supplements, has diff eight different isomers here. One of them's the real deal. This is alpha tocopherol. This is fake, 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 fake. All seven of the other isomers are not vitamin E. And yet, on the label, it says vitamin E, so many milligrams. So beware when you buy a supplement. The reason why these are so common in supplements is that the synthetic vitamin E is vastly cheaper than real vitamin E. When I designed the brain and body food for the people who couldn't get into the study, the vitamin E cost as much as everything else in it because I wanted real vitamin E. And the manufacturer kept saying, you sure you don't want this synthetic junk here? It's really cheap. I said, yes, I'm sure. We supplied 500 milligrams of non-synthetic vitamin E with mixed tocopherols in our study to, in this 2019 study in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences, they showed that vitamin E is effective in improving cognitive performance in Alzheimer's disease. But it has to be the real deal. Uh, this, by the way, the brain and body food is, when people couldn't get into the study and they heard about the study at the clinic, we made this up. So it has most, but not all, of the things in the study. You could actually mimic the study by taking this and a few other things, changing your diet. And you could do your own study on yourself.